and guess what? They take the tusk. So now we're like, wait, is it the tusk four or is it going to be the tusk, you know, mid and you already have all your cores ready. So they're keeping us guessing. And the uh, Reapers, they do take the Drow Ranger, who I believe um, the Shard does reduce their health regeneration by quite a, by, with the hyperthermia. So it's mm -hmm. fairly good against the Alchemist as well. So I yeah. don't know. This draft, it's it's funky from Xerxes, but I like it. Reapers, much more standard. So you kind of know what you're getting with you're getting from their draft. Yeah, it's true. And the fact that a Drow quite likes the lane versus an underlord because you know you're never going to be there in the creeps you shouldn't really get hit by the uh the firestorm all too much should be happily able to cs away uh unless of course maybe they try and mix it up make this a, a four tusk and then in which case you could like snowball forward the underlord onto the drow ranger and then that is just going to be pain central right there it's the last set of bands here they for Xerxia, they still believe that's going to be an off-lane pick, which, I mean, makes sense, right? You have, like, the Drow carrying the mid-ember. Undying has occasionally been picked as an off-laner. We see, like, them go with the Echo Saber and the Shard and the BKB, and it works pretty decently, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's happening in this game. You know, it's, it seems seems too gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely could work, but, yeah, so far, it definitely feels like a POS5 would... Uh... Just be a fantastic outcome for it. So, just looking for their own mid laner still. I mean, it feels like they sort of need some other front line. Sure, they've got the Undying, but he's not going to be enough on, on his own at all. So, maybe just another like, beefy, tanky boy that they can just sit in front of the Drow Ranger to try and make as much space as possible. Um, how do you feel about a Mars, perhaps? I like the Mars pick. Uh, Mars would be pretty solid for them. Uh, the thing is, one of Mars's bulwark ability becomes com kind of completely useless because there's no ranged enemies for you to deal with. But it's still, it's still like it's still very, very solid game for a Mars pick for sure. If Reapers want to go for it, uh, I was thinking also something like a Tide Hunter wouldn't be so bad. If you want to go for Auras uh, for your team, that would also be helpful because you, when you're thinking about like a big beefy boy, think of a Tide Hunter mm -hmm. before that. They take away the Dawn Breaker, who, while not the beefiest woman in the in the planet you know she can't show up anywhere and she is fairly sturdy anyway so let's see their last pick so is it tusk mid is it tusk support we're gonna find out in just a second here these guys if you look at Xerxes, though they are hard to kill like holy yeah. moly underlord alchemist tusk now yeah, they are it's definitely they got to pick a little about what they where they want to put these people um yeah i mean there, there was a there was one spot of time where underlord was played mid quite quite heavily uh and i guess versus an ember spirit that's also a really strong matchup so yeah i feel like i feel like it's either going to be the alchemist or the underlord mid i don't know i'm leaning towards that and i feel like this is going to be a standard tusk support but only 12 seconds to work with so they've got to make a decision soon and it's a disruptor okay so it is tusk mid tusk then? Mid. Yeah. yeah tusk mid and they had the disruptor okay so it's gonna be the carry i mean i i don't know when you were saying, like, it's going to be the Underlord of the Alchemist, I'm like, no, no, it's just <laughs> mid. But, um, all right, so I like I like the Disruptor pick here quite a bit. It's very solid. Like, you know, if enemy runs away, it's great against Ember Spirit. The Stag Storm is just fantastic. Even Mirani can just glimpse her back. You're already going to have the Rod of Inside, the Rod of Inside, the Pit of Malice. So you already have that way of holding people down, the Ice Charge. Well, it's, 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 it's good. Overall, I really like Jerkshia's draft at the very end. And, I'm feeling very confident. I don't know what Reaper's gonna take. They have to get a pretty incredible off laner in this situation to for me to like side with them because I just like mm -hmm. Xerxes' draft. Yeah, like I say, it does feel quite well rounded and solid. Uh, at least for Reaper, they do have a lot of reserve time a minute and 40 seconds to actually work with right now. Um, but yeah, so just some sort of big, beefy off laner who can bring some team fight because that is something that they are lacking very heavily right now. All they've got is the tombstone from Undying. And that is literally it. Um, so yeah, something like the Mars Tide Hunter, uh, Magnus, I don't know. Magnus but, maybe. How do you feel? Uh, uh, maybe maybe Enigma could be quite good as well. Just get like yeah. an early BKB, and there's literally no BKB piercing disables on the side of uh, of Sergio. Oh, they go for it. Uh, they go for the I, I was thinking that while I like the idea of an Enigma and a Tide Hunter, I think your Mars suggestion was better because it's slower cooldown, more front lines because. You go Enigma, you know, then it's all in on Undying. 
You know, it's like, Adai, you better go give us all the vision of the world and we'll try to get a black coin. If you go in with the Magnus, similar with the RP, but, and also you just like, don't get the same front line. I, I really like what Xerxia has. I do think it's going to be very, pretty tough for uh, Reapers to win this game, but we'll see what they're going for. And by the way, it is going to be the, I mean, JG is the mid laner, so he takes the under, it is going to be Rapido on the Tusk. So, huh? It's gonna, is it really going to be the mid underlord? I, uh, big brain. I knew it. I knew it. I mean, it's, they're probably going to change something now and it's not, but who knows? <laughs> Biggest prediction of the century. That's what we it's, aim for. The thing is, the passive from the underlord gives him so much base damage, like extra. When you're getting, you know, you're getting all these extra, you're getting kill, kills all these on the lane, on these creeps. And uh, suddenly the Ember Spirit will be very hard for him to see us. So, Unlocked could really work. This is one of the reasons why Primal Beast is a good mid, right? Because you get the uproar stacks, you get bunch, you know, massive amount of bonus damage. You can you know, just deny all the all the creeps for the enemy mid laner, and delay their timing by three minutes or so. Yeah, that's definitely true. I think one one thing to note as well on the side of Reapers, they don't have many stuns whatsoever. Like they've got the Marana Arrow and Searing Chains are their only two non-ultimate stuns, and one of them's a skill shot, and the other one. Only hits two people. <laughs> so they might struggle actually trying to control people up going into this game, perhaps. We'll see how that it's ends fine. up affecting them. All they gotta do is control an alchemist. Those, that guy's notoriously easy to, to take to control, right? Like, yeah. uh, and uh, of course, alchemist, by the way, once you get him that nice shard upgrade, he's able to dispel allies, which is very nice, you know? Yeah, Over, <laughs> overall, I'm just liking the Xerxia draft so much more. And we'll, we'll, we'll see how it's going to go. Uh, so all, the, the, there's going to have damage issues, by the way. You're up against an Underlord, you're up against a uh, Tusk, and you're up against a, an Alchemist. These are the three cores on the enemy side, by the way. So can can uh, can Drowning just really deal with that? It doesn't seem like it, honestly. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a very, very tough one to go up against right now. Um, and it looks like Reaper... Did try setting up inside their own jungle. I think this is exactly the same thing they've done against Neon uh, in their first game. They put they put this ward down, sort of the low ground by the river. They put one up on the high ground, uh, and they were just sort of trying to set up for this trap for anyone pushing into them. But unfortunately, just like last time, no one ends up taking the bait. Yeah, as well as maybe they watched last game, you know, their series, and they're like, you know, they do this move every time, guys. It's it's kind of cute, but let's not fall for it, you know. And uh, even then, if they get caught, like. Damage, unless a good arrow lands, I don't think you have much damage to, to bring them down. And no, uh, it is true. a grand, I gotta say though, Toy is a grand master draw ranger. No. All right, now that is a thing. The guy knows his draw ranger. Yeah, that that would require a lot of games. So he has been around the block. Obviously, we've got the uh, the arcana as well, because as we all know, skins mean skill. A true warrior never rage quits. I don't know that. Is that saying? You've been throwing out a bunch of these. What was it? Uh, Greed means, he said something, greed means, greed means dead or something greed, like that. Greed, greed is feed. Greed yes, is, that's the one. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was like, uh, huh. that's That's the mantra that I've lived behind for years and most of the time it works out. <laughs> so uh, one of the issues I think that Undying is going to suffer from, by the way, is that you're not going to get the two-man decays very easily, right? You can see Bombi on one side and Rapido on the other side. And just like they walk next to each other, but it's not as easy as as up against two melee or even two range heroes to get a double decay off. And uh, he is he's taking a lot of hits from Bombi so far. Oh, yeah. double decay! I suppose as long as if he just keeps on hitting the tusk with the decay, bringing his strength down low, and then Toy can just do these extremely annoying harassment hits. Like the tusk can do nothing. He just has to stay away from the lane. Otherwise, he just gets bullied so hard. And uh, yeah, this mid lane. So the mid underlords. And we'll see how this uh, ends up panning out. Obviously, we'll probably see Fearless spam quite a few points into Flame Guard, I guess, to try and absorb some of the damage coming in from the Firestorm. But I don't think it lasts long. It'll probably be like two or three volleys, and, and then the shield will just collapse. So, yeah, you might try ignoring it. Who knows? There's plenty of ways you can uh, play around this. I'm thinking that as the as the you know, like the the matchup continues, JG is going to go further and further ahead once he gets more points into the attribute aura and as well as the fire so especially level two atrophy hour you get to like double the damage from the creeps and uh, you also mitigate three times as much damage from the enemy so uh yeah it's gonna be feels like it's gonna be harder and harder for fearless we'll find out what he's going for he's still holding on to that third skill point for quite a while 
Yeah. I mean, even just their base damage, like, uh, JG's got a full 11 ahead, and he's just so freely able to hit away. <laughs> Plus, the actual aura reducing the damage of the Ember, it's just so difficult for him to actually secure these last hits by, like, doing normal right uh, right attacks. So, it's definitely a difficult one for him. Ooh, meanwhile, up top, RDP taking a bit of a beat and getting really low, and the final Thunderstrike hit actually brings him down. Charger there with the first blood. Nice start here for uh, Zerja. And Karma, he is not being greedy at all. He's got the point in the assets, the point in the stun. Now on his level 3 does he take the Grievous to get. So they were like really playing for that kill. And Disruptor, you glimpse someone back and you know, like they've been walking for a while. You can, oh, he, yeah. oh, he goes back to base. That oh. is horrible. That is the worst feeling in the game to get glimpsed back to base. Before Brown Boots as well, RDP is going to be walking for a while. Oh, shame. That is... Uh... Man, that's gonna hurt quite a lot. That's gonna hurt quite a lot. Why check out mid lane? Oh, the the JG side slowly pull up for them further ahead here. A gift from the yeah, 17 and 3 to the 11 and 2 there of Fearless. They're gonna be feeling quite comfortable. Chocking down the Firestorm very aggressively so Fearless can't fall back to the safety of his tower and like forces him to trade right clicks. There's a cute little play that. But smash, smacks him in the face like here. You want me? You want to go up against me in a creep, or you want to, you know, take my fire stuff and oh god, just even fortifies them. Yeah, that is absolutely horrible. He's got no bottle charges left as well. Obviously, War Rune's going to be spawning uh, in about 20 seconds time. So it, it could be quite a nice call here for JG. Maybe get one of his supports to rotate, secure the other War Rune, and then that is Fearless's lane probably over. Jaja is he's going for the top row and he's like, yeah, we know that we realize the suffering. We want this co to continue. Sadistic plays by XOC, I must say. But uh, what's the games for you, right? This is the best way you can play it. And poor fearless man, he goes up and it's like, and just yeah. like, there's no rule. There's nothing there for me, guys. Yeah, that is horrible. I mean, you don't win Dota by being kind and not punishing people. It's all about just being merciless as possible. Uh, you, so you're one of those guys who like unpauses the moment someone DCs, right? Oh, like, no, eh. no, 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 that 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 is dirty. That's like that's winning through, you know, just completely ungame mechanic sort of thing. That's just being mm. an asshole. That's but, dishonor. Yeah, yeah that is. You. Oh, wrong lane. Toy yeah. dice. Toy got picked up on so that. Gondry might be following him here. One more right click is all Ridpo's gonna need. <laughs> it does bring him down. And Bombay is like, you know what? I'll go kill myself. Is he gonna wait for them to TP and I... then kill himself? Oh, is he gonna do that? Yeah, he just TPs himself. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess. Time. I guess he was trying to wait as long as possible so no one got the kill credit. But yeah, just not long enough. That's fine. I mean, again, they they are winning. They're winning all the lanes only on on Zerg CL. You can see the net. Worth. Why are we looking at net worth? Yep, top three all on their side. So. Bit scary here for Reapers, considering that their draft is a bit of the faster one, right? Like, you're up against an Alfred. Yeah, and just the longer that goes on, the worse it's going to get. I was still just keeping the one point into the Grievous Greed there for Karma. So definitely wants to just keep the uh, max points into the Acid Spray. Whereas, you know, just trying to control the lane as much as possible. And tells you how to play it. Later on, we want Jungle as well, and... Uh, yep, 700, no, sorry, 700 gold ahead, JG is leading Fearless. Fearless still not even level 6. Uh, he will get there very soon, though. He hasn't been able to get as much denies. 12 denies, actually, pretty good, but uh, he hasn't been able to, like, completely shut down. RDP loses his life again, though. Yeah, I missed that. I think they, they got the spot that the Mirana was making rotation towards the mid. Oh, he even misses the arrow, actually, onto JG. Rune does spawn top. It is a double damage. Can the uh, Skyraf may provide enough assistance? And it looks like he can. So he would be able to get on out, but JG yeah, has just TP back to base. He's got no regen to work with. Meanwhile, the two supports try to go and fear this right now. Actually goes in aggressively there. Nicely done, but the ultimate from the Underlord. Can he get the cut off? Another jump to the side. The slow just about lands, and Fearless will be brought down. JG even getting the kill credit there. And Hong Hong maybe wants to try and do some damage to bring down Bombi, but he just doesn't stand his ground, try and right click away, trading as best he possibly can, but it's not going to work. All the ball, though. With the long range oh, axes. axes. Okay. And, uh, yeah. They find some food, but even still, be definitely benefit it as uh, yeah. And he also finds a nice, a decent stack. It's a dolly double. It's not you know, the biggest deal. It's like, it's like, hey, this is a nice double stack for me, everybody. Everyone move aside. This is my stack. Okay, it does again. And a bit of misplay came out from Jaja. He 
glimpsed Fearless next to the creep wave as a creep about was died, giving him enough experience to reach level six. So uh, just a tiny thing that cost him. Even still, Zerg, Zerg, yeah, like they've been playing it better the whole game, and all oh, the oh, silence. They're just going on him right again. He's trying to get away. It's pretty slow, but the firestorm perfectly plays from JG. And that's the Ember dead. TP's going to be on cooldown when he respawns. And to be honest, this tower's going to take a bit of a beat him. The arrow at least from Hong Kong killing the catapult, but this is this is not good. Not good at all. And uh, JG says, I want to go for the Rod of Ada's first item. You know, but, you know, just to make sure that I can grab people for my sports to do the damage they need to, especially the Skyrath Mage. So, uh, ouch, you know, it is, uh, it is scary looking right now for Reapers. Yeah, I need something to try and change the pace of this game. Anything will do. I mean, to be honest, like, I kind of expected that when the Skyrath started rotating out, that uh, both Gondry as well as Toy could have started really harassing out the Tusk, but it seems like Ridipo is, is uh, just been left to his own devices. He's not really been punished that hard. Called a TP scroll, and they have no stuns like you mentioned, right? So it's like, uh... <laughs> They're trying to go on Toy. The trees actually end up blocking their uh, entry as well as the Drow's escape. So they just have to di disengage. Fearless charging forwards there with the Fire Remnants. Does manage to get the kill into the sky. Can they bring down the Tusk as well? I'm not sure if they've quite have enough left in the tank to do so. But Fearless doing his namesake. Not caring. Diving past the Tier 1 tower. Any TP rotation from the side of Zersha can completely flip this on his head. But no one's doing it. And Rudy, uh, Rupido. It's just left. He's dead. Easy double for Fearless. Dog. Up, up top though. RTP now going to get dived under the tower. Is there any way to get himself out? No, I don't believe there is. I, I like how Zuzi is like, if you die to the stand-in, that's your fault. We're not helping you. You know, Fearless <laughs> is diving. It's, it's a stand-in, guys. It doesn't count. We're not going to, we don't, we don't assist when the stand is doing move. And he's a stand-in who's been really shut down. Like, yeah, yeah, RDP, yeah. RDP as well as him. And look at that, they come in, he's like, hey, look at that. Is this uh, this double stack only? So, it's double stack of ancients, more for JG to take. He is all level nine in nine minutes. And look at that glimpse. Sends it back, easy kill out to Hong Hong. And this tier one tower gone. Sub 10 minutes in, losing your own offlane tower is just, <laughs> it's just insult to injury. 3k gold advantage now for the dire side. This is a. Uh, is there a point where this game maybe starts to get easier for them, or is this just a downhill decline? I think it's a downhill decline as well. Like it's like you look at it, you're like, okay, what does Reaper have? Do they have great team fight? No. Do they have good pick off? Yes, they do have good pick offs. That's the one. That's the one thing they have. But you're up against extremely durable heroes, and you're behind. So getting those kills is very difficult. I mean, while bombing, he might be losing his life. Yeah, he gets taken down, Soul Rift to the back. There is actually Ember Spirit here, but he's got no mana to try and get himself out of here with. He's in a real dangerous position. He's just dead. They took the bait. They found the kill onto the Skyrath Mage. But they lose so much more. Two heroes, then mid laner, and they're going to give away Tombstone Gold to boot. Yeah, this game is just going from bad to worse here for Reaper. I guess the positive is that they took some of those creeps, but that's like, that's such a lame positive. It's like, oh man. Look, they died four, but they didn't five die. They didn't all five die of them, you know? It's like only four yeah. died, so uh, that's the situation here. It's like, yeah, they, you know, they lost two of their core, uh, two heroes, but the good thing is that they took a couple of creeps, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you have to just look for those silver linings. Avert the tilt any way you can. Yeah. Well, they need to do a lot of that for Xerxia right now, because this Alchemist. Um, he is uh, he is getting gargantuan, I believe is the word. He's going to have the, the sacred relic very soon, and then he's going to be very close to his hand of Midas. Uh, sorry, not uh, the radius bomb lane. Yeah, do the Prince K, get on top of the Drow Ranger. No way to survive that. Gondry, probably going to end up falling as well. There's absolutely nothing that Reaper can do here. They're just losing people left, right, and center, and they're even able to go back through the gate to resume their farm. Not losing any efficiency whatsoever. Meanwhile, though, actually, Fearless is coming in. They're going to be able to find another kill here onto Bombi. But not before he actually just gets a solo kill onto Hong Hong. Well, not even too bad of a trade win there, to be honest. Oh, I'm not it, it looks like RDP is going to be another casualty. Yeah. He's dead. <laughs> they, even just, they dropped the Static Storm for good measure, just to make sure. 
He is surprisingly high level. He's actually the most farmed hero on the, on his team. I was like, look, I was like, he's level nine. That's not almost level ten. Not bad in a game like this, but uh, still far behind everyone else on Xerxes side. And again, he was was he that he's like one four in death, whereas Rapido he's been involved in seven kills, getting two of them for himself. So it's like, yeah, you're getting gold, but what is it actually giving giving your team or Reaper is not much. Yeah, just these, these tiny little bits of space. I'm not really making space for anybody. Nobody important anyway, to be honest. And it's just, this it doesn't seem like there's anything they could do. Oh, nice shot. Does connect onto Fearless, but obviously he's an Ember Spirit, so he's able, able to just disengage very easily. Although it looks like maybe Zerja is going to start bringing some more heroes down here as well. The Moonlight Shadow has been activated. Maybe they could try and set something up. They got the connection onto Bombi again. Token and Prodded. The Mystic Flare actually a little bit off the mark there. The Shards pushed the Mirana in a different direction, but you can't escape the Fist. Punches him in the face. There is going to be a Glyph trying to send the Ember Spirit backwards, but he's still just charging. You're going to be able to find the kill to scar up eventually. He's still alive for now, but the Disruptor is already dead. And jg has got a little army of zombies on him, but the Tombstone actually times out. Maybe he can get himself away, but there's just too many balls as well. The slows racking up relentlessly. And Ripido, the only person left alive down here for Zerja. And I think it's just a matter of time before he falls. Oh, he's going to actually go aggressively in towards RDB. But just try to juke out of the, uh, the endless maze. The good for Zerzi is only four of them died, not five. You know, that five is bad news, but four dying is very acceptable. Uh, but, uh, to be fair, Karma was farm farming that whole time. He's at the radius. And that is the first, like, win for three versus now. It was the Mirama, but they get everyone else a massive oh. victory. The Glimpse back in the mid lane there onto Toy. There is the Alchemist here, but nice searing chains from the Ember Spirit. Actually keeps the Alchemist back and probably just saved the Drow's life. JG. Yeah, he's got the lot of aces. He's going for the BKB and all takes an arrow to the face, but they're like, yeah, we really can't actually hurt the guy, you know, with the with all the stats he's got, as well as the cloak right on top of it. And of course, he's got the broom handle, which gives you four armor, so they said yeah. wisely not to take the risk. I mean, the only way they killed him down the bot lane was the fact that he had about eight zombies on him, the two boars as well, and two heroes beat into him. And it still took him a long time to take him down. That's only with two points in Atrophy Arrow, right? Like, once you get like max out the spell, you'll see it's just very hard for them to get kills on Reapers. That was a nice victory, but I look at it, I think, and, and afterwards, the net worth is actually more in favor of Xerxia. That's how the situation is right now. Bombay don't really want this tower. They're going for it. Bombay, the first target yet again. Can they bring down the Scar before he could get his ult off? Doesn't look like it to be the case. Hong Kong put in absolutely everything in to find the kill. But the Fearless is able to pick him off from a long range. But Gondry, unfortunately, I think he's going to die. Tombstone is down. But there's no sort of follow-ups. That's just going to be extra gold given away. Glimpse, drag it back, fearless. He was actually able to... Wait, did he... How did he get there? It what? Did it didn't look like he remnanted, did it? Right? Like, it looked like... No. It... What was that? That was... Was that some sort of animation error? I mean, it didn't look like he had enough money. That was weird, because he got next to it, and then he sort of just moved somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I think I know. I think he slides a fist while he was being glimpsed. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That makes sense. Oh, they've actually got the grab there onto Rupido. Rap Tusk is easy pickings. They're even going to be able to take down the tier 1 tower. So despite the fact they took that loss at the bot lane there, Reaper are able to bounce back, start finding some objectives. Another grab there on towards Bombi. This Skyraf has just been the main person getting beaten into on the side of Zergia. Seven of their uh, 13 deaths. He's, uh, because you think that Skyraf mage, you're, very high, you're highly mobile. You have literally one of the longest range spells with aggressive shot, but uh, he does walk in a little bit for forward sometimes. It doesn't really, I don't think it really matters. You know, like if you look at Xerxes, it's like, as long as we're trading, we're getting, doing pretty easily. Oh, that is a fast rush though. That was, uh, it. was a bad D, TD ruin on the draw range, that's why. Uh, so they've definitely done a decent job of slowing down the pace right now. It's still a farmed alchemist, but you weather the storm, things might get a lot better for Reapers. Yeah, it's true. So was a, a, a alchemist net worth is always inflated, so you can't take it for its face value of how far ahead they are. But even still, he is a full 6,000 gold ahead of the counterpart Drow Ranger. So I think that's still a, a sizable chunk to say that they are in the lead. Going to be able to bring down this tombstone as well. 
Just a bit of extra gold. The arrow does land, but literally no follow-up at all they could do. Actually, I say that. They are poking quite nicely from afar. But it's the heal coming in from the uh, from the Chemical Rage, keeping him up. And they just oh, mass TP to the top. Toy it was not expected that. This is the fresh age. He's coming in very soon. And so is the rest of his team. But can they get it quick enough to actually keep him alive? Moonlight Shadow, maybe it can do something to delay this, but not long enough at all. He still falls. And Karma, even surviving himself. It was not the ones you wanted to get out of the Aegis. Like, he was pretty far off by himself when he lost it, and eh, they know they're coming now. Yeah, it seems like they could go for something, but it looks like they have to change their mind. Azurgia not going to try and shy away from the fight going straight in. They've got the good connection on towards the Beastmaster. Raw drops for the Tusk as well. They might be able to burst him down, they do, but Beastmaster loses his own life in response. Karma surviving, keeping doing damage. He is getting killed to Rana as well as the Ember Spirit manages to get the Remnant off to the side, but he's still got two charges to work with. Glimpse trying to pull him back. Oh, he mistimes it. He gets dragged back into the pit of malice. And down he goes as well. That, I mean, you got to feel pretty tough, pretty bad for Reapers right now. Toy was very out of position. Because they remember, there's no tier one on their side. There's no outpost to TP to. They have nothing. Like, when Toy was caught in that situation, there's nothing Reapers can do except do a slow walk there. By the time they show up, they can't help him. And if he had a BKB, maybe he could have, you know, BKB TP'd out. But even then, that's wishful thinking up against, you know, an alchemist when you were draw ranger. So, uh, Toy putting the team in a very tough situation just now. And uh, it cost mm. them a lot. Yeah, I guess he's just sort of desperate to try and find any farm he can. But, you know, he was, they were lacking a lot of vision. He, they, he was actually just farming pretty much underneath two observer wards in the side of Zergia. So they had the complete control of that area. And Toya yeah, just risked it for a biscuit, biscuit and it did not pay off. Yeah, no, he's, he's probably telling you that. He's like, guys, if I had a hawk there, I, mean, I think I actually had a hawk there, but it's like, yeah, see, this is your fault. You guys gave me more vision. So yeah, a little unfortunate, but it happens. And uh, that is BKB now on JG, who is you know, the Underlord. 2,000 health, massive physical armor reduction. He's got a cloak and a BKB now. Um, yeah, you're going to have to find some way to kill this guy. Yeah. Well, I see you, you've dumped all your eggs in the basket of trying to get rid of the Underlord, and then you just got the got the Alchemist doing whatever the hell he wants to the rest of your team. It's definitely a rock and hard play situation. Look, looks like uh, Reaper, they're trying to get control of their jungle yet again. Arrow will actually still connect on to Jaja. Should be a dead disruptor. Nice shards actually trying to delay this, but couldn't really change the outcome. But, I mean, fine. regardless, that, that was, yeah, that's like a full five-man rotation. All they managed to get for it is the position five. So, yeah, Sergio, they're going to be happy with that. Oh, cool, we, can, we found something, makes it worth our smoke, but same thing with Bozo, she's like, he, he literally couldn't care. You know, our Alchemist is, again, he is massive, six, zero, sorry, four, zero, and seven. About, and he's just been free-farming the entire game, doubling the net worth of the Draw Ranger. It is an Alchemist, so some of that gold is inflated, but... Uh, mm. Double gold is double gold. Yeah, no, I... yeah. <laughs> it's very true. Like no matter what the hero is, having double someone's net worth is going to be an absolutely massive difference when it actually comes to a team fight. And yeah, trying to build in towards the uh, Sanjin Yasha now. What's his next one? Well, actually, he's got a he's got a Salt Cure queued up first. So no, he's actually doing AC and then the Sanjin Yasha. So I completely missed the fact that he also had a Hyperstone in his uh, inventory. Definitely could use the, the armor though. One of the things about Alchemist is that your base armor is pretty damn atrocious. So uh, you end up uh, and draw just pierces through that. So a bit of extra base armor. So a bit of extra armor from the Salt Cross is fantastic. Oh, could they find anyone? It's likely they can. RDP just makes it out. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try and take out his uh, Ancient Creep Arrow. instead. There's oh. a lot of damage onto J, uh, JG. Oh, Arrow just goes straight for the bit. They couldn't actually even finish off the Thunderhide. Able to plod itself away. Yeah, jump forwards there from Fearless. Does get the connection onto Jaja. That should be a dead disruptor. He manages to get the ultimate down first. Fearless, he took the bait. Can he actually get himself out of this one? There's the heels bombarding him from the rest of his team. He's getting low. He's rooting in place, but still, he's actually managing to out survive everybody else. Eventually, he falls, but it doesn't matter. Zerge is taking heavy losses. JG getting stuck into the trees. Karma is in there. Gondry trying to get himself out through the enemy teleport. Not quite going to work, though. Tombstone is down, buyback comes in from the Tusk, wants to try and help out the Alchemist, who was it in a 1 versus 3. But with that Q, Reaper just disengaged, taking that fight as a win. Which I think it is, yeah, 2k gold swing, plus uh, 2,500 experience. I think they're happy with that. 
one thing I say about Xerxes, Jeff, is that the, we've talked about Tusk. I mean, I've ranted about this hero cons consistently, but the hero is becoming a sport. More and more, like, yeah, he's not that far behind Fearless, who has, has had a tough game, but I'll, I mean, Tusk, he's got Guardian Greaves, and that's it. He's going to have a, the, uh, the Blink Dagger fairly soon, but overall, the hero in about 10 minutes is probably going to have the same net worth as, as the other supports, assuming it keeps going the same way it is. They're funneling all their gold into Karma, so it's kind of be Karma against the world. JG's going to be able to survive, but that's about it. Maybe, you know, a little bit of control, but it's all on Karma to do the damage. With Rapido, he is falling further and further behind. The supports are, you know, they're supports. They're not going to be the ones who will carry this game for you. No, that is very true. And now Karma does have that AC completed. So, do you think that's a cue for them to now try and search for another fight? Or do they need to wait for someone else to get another item? But it looks like uh, Reaper's is going to take the fight to them. Doing a four-man smoke right now. Let's see who they find. Uh, the vision that Xerxes has is kind of useless. It's like one of the top in front of the tier one. One of the, like, the enemy like near their tier two tower. So, it's like not places that Reapers are playing with. Reapers, like, they feel like very aware of that. They're just playing... It's far from these ward areas, near their own map, map and control, so I'm I'm liking the what Reapers is doing. You know, they just they had a tough laning stage and they managed to come back in this. The, the poke is fantastic, right? We see the mm. the light searing chains followed by axes, followed by uh, soul rip, and followed by like an arrow. So just doing a really good job of poking and making sure they they start fights off well. Do I see it though? Uh, looks like they find, they see RDP in there. They want him. You know, they're like, hey buddy, let's give you a hug. Yeah, give him another little whack to the face. He does have a 9 second BKB to use. Can he get it off fast enough? The answer to that question is no. No, he cannot. Dies pretty quickly. Um, next Roche as well. Potentially up in 18 seconds, but we'll see how uh, how fast that's actually going to be. And then that's going to be like... I imagine that around this Roche pit will probably be where the next main team fight happens. Hmm. Dry Ranger, by the way, she does take the shard up before the BKB, which makes sense, right? You really need it for the damage output. If you're not hurting the enemy, you're not, you know, if you're not getting kills, you're never gonna come back in this game. So BKB comes out second, but he's very close to the BKB. So Toy will have that. This is a Grandmaster Jarringer. So I'm looking forward to see what plays he can make. And it's a long Roche, two minutes and 45 seconds. Almost the longest it could be. Yeah, I think it was nearly max time. Right. That's why I guess not either team was desperate for it. I, I think probably Zersha would have liked it to help close out this game quickly before the drow got even fatter. But so you know, maybe a little bit of helping hand there for Reaper. They got some more time to work with. Although well, a okay. missile blade just completed now for the alchemist. Yep, gives him another way of controlling the drow ranger. Which again, their control against the BKB targets are walrus punch, and that's it. So. You definitely need those. On the other hand, the other team has the roar, which is was it four, four seconds? That's pretty insane, actually. I was like, oh, I, I, does it is it start at two point five? No, it starts at three seconds, piercing the BKB, and then four seconds to the max. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Nice. Ridiculous amount of lockdown. Well, in the meantime, though, Roshan, yeah, the both teams are starting are saying like, let's play around it. For Zoysia, they have this nice ward next to a uh, nice good ward, but there's also Hawks coming out from Reapers. So who's going to get the jump on who? Five man smoke from Reapers. Yeah. Um, trying their best to see who they can find. Looks like Jaja Charger again is going to be the first target right now. And Charger forwards. Does he manage to get the old off in time? He's holding on to it for now, playing very, very calm. He's getting low, but he's not going to have the chance to drop it. Be more oh, calm now. Pop this BKB. Focusing on towards the emissary, punch up the sky, but Fearless is still alive for now. The Moonlight Shadow, actually, I don't think they have any detection for him. And now JG, he's stuck in the middle of everybody. The BKB is not making any difference. There is at least a snowball trying to help him out, but I think all that's going to do is get the Tusk killed as well. But Karma actually re engaging, trying to focus on the Ember Spirit, but the force up to the high ground gets him out of danger, and everyone is just chasing after Karma right now. Jarjas in the trees, looking for an opportunity to drop the ult, but it's not going to make any difference as he gets caught, nearly gets hit by the arrow, but at least able to force start his alchemist out of there very clutch play there from Jaja and I think just like that it kept the alchemist alive luckily for Xerxia there is no a Roshan up because that was a disaster of a fight it's a you know buyback being used by the structure and you get two of the cores the mid laner and the off laner here and uh they try like they try to jump on the sorry they were able to get the disruptor off fairly early and when he comes back it's like eh, can't really like control the enemy team so 
The BKB also coming out from Fearless was clutch, right? That was his first BKB. He jumps in. He takes a bit of damage, but he turns on BKB. It's like, well, a lot of Alchemist damage doesn't feel it. It's not as, it's not as dangerous here. And everyone else is just mostly magic damage. So really well played by me for sustaining this game. Yeah, definitely. Very well executed engagement, that. And Roshamp now respawned, which they do have the information that Hawk just about clipping onto uh, onto Roshan himself. But they need to take another fight now, take another person off the field, and then that objective could possibly even be theirs. Take try the best though. I guess it has to be Ember Spirits, right? Because only your supports and Ember don't have it. You already have the Beastmaster Hawk ready for the dive bomb. And uh, you also have, of course, the... Um, uh, the uh, sorry, the hyperthermia. So, uh, I mean, Undying's shard is pretty garbage on a support, but Mirana's shard is also considered one of the worst. It has to be the Ember Spirit. Not yeah. the best shard, but, but fairly nice. Yeah, some minor little quality of life increase. Not something that's going to play a big factor in this game, but JG gets hit by another arrow right now. But with that Pillar Malice in a perfect position, it sort of halts the uh, pursuit there of Reapers. Even still, both sides just holding up on the high ground. The river jump forwards there from Karma. Gets a good connection onto the toy as well as the Bissell Blade. Try to burst him down as fast as possible. There is going to be the four staff. Bring a bit of safety there, but the glimpse straight back into the middle of it. He's taking a beating, throwing arrows out left, right, and center. He's getting low, but not enough to actually drop him. But eventually, he does actually die there. I think the illusions managed to uh, finish off the drow. Even still, Jump Force of Karma again. The BKB is going to be there to avoid the unstable concoction as well as the raw. They're locking down the Alchemist as best they possibly can, doing every single bit of damage, but it's not quite enough. Meanwhile, Fearless, he's trapped inside the stack. Storm, he's not got his BKB to disengage. He is dead this time. Glimpse as well onto RTP, but it looks like Sergio are just interested in disengaging. I say that, and Karma straight back in again. Another concoction on towards a toy. The arrow actually lands onto Sharsha in the back lines. Gondry is going to be able to finish him off as a result. <laughs> Wasn't even the intended target of that arrow, but hey, a little bit of luck there for Reapers. They'll gladly take it. And why they got arrowed next to the fire remnant, which has the shards, so it burns him the whole time. So <laughs> yeah. uh, that fire remnant ended up doing quite a bit, you know, you get, get from the kill that they need to. Overall, those are sick. I guess they walk away a little bit happy. Yeah, they lose two, but they do take away the Aegis out of Toy and they kill Fearless. So it's not the biggest deal in the world that, uh, like, you know, the, the graph says that. Reapers is the one that walks away happy, and they do, but Zerxia, they're, not, they're not annoyed by that fight at all. The problem is, though, one, Rapido is, as we said, he's becoming a support, so it's going to be two cores against three cores. Another thing is that it's uh, it's an alchemist, you know, this oh, guy's boy. gold is in the little, it's inflated, and he's not double the draw right here, still 12k ahead, still much stronger than her, but within the next 15 minutes we might see toys start to actually become more dangerous than karma yeah that will be the key he is going to be there's that pure uh, actual source of damage output and karma now complete an axe who's he giving it to is he going to give it to the disruptor that would be one of, probably one of the best but, uh, i don't know if he wants is, is he on uh, yep yeah that is I was thinking, like, that would be the best person to be honest, to give it to. Honestly, the supports have better Aghanim's blessings than, like, the Underlord and the, uh, the... Okay, so the other guy's pretty good, Ember Spirit. But still, the other the supports are, are at least better than, than the Underlord, who's, who sucks, man. Oh, well, that's, that's the makes a pit at the end of your armor, doesn't it? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I'll be honest, it's not bad. It's just the support that, like, compared to an AoE Doom, that's pretty good. Yeah. And even the uh, Skyrath, which is like the double. It's basically, you get a free Skyrath mage when you give him an Agon Scepter. Every time he casts a spell, he gets another spell. Yeah, that is true. Well, yep, I'm for the. That is a big, big little helping hand there for Sharsha. He, he had he actually had that his own Agonims queued up for about 5-10 minutes, but could make any progress to it. He's been picked off so many times in these fights. So with that picked up now, that might catch Reapers by surprise, who are coming in for a Moonlight Shadow Plate. See who they're able to find. Karma is there, but he's got a Lincoln Sphere put on top of him. So he's providing a bit of extra safety. Jumps in very aggressively. There's going to be the exact Storm. Gets the connection just onto the Beastmaster, though, but he could not get himself out of it. Gondry's also going to fall momentarily. But you know, in the back lines, Fearless is on top of Jarja, but he's already dropped his ultimate, so it's not really the end of the world when the Disruptor dies here. And Fearless is trying to get himself out. It looks like he will successfully manage to. All charging forwards. There's nice shackles there, just in time. Hey, everybody. Really nice move by by George. Though he just drops the 
The stack storm on the on the beastmaster they can't get his BKB off because he just got a free Aghanim scepter upgrade from his friend, uh, from his karma friend. So very nice move for them overall. They are going to be able to take this tier two bottom, and with it the outpost further giving the map control here. Roshan is going to be down for four minutes here. So especially if they want to go high ground safely, they're going to have to wait a long time for the for that. Honestly, you know, you get a pick off in this area, which is where you want to play, right? You want to play right next to the enemy objectives if you can't help it. Yeah, that is very true. So now there's still a 10k gold lead in the uh, advantage tour of uh, Zerja, which is literally the net worth advantage that uh, the Alchemist has over the Drow. So that is where the entirety of that net worth disparity is actually coming into play there. Everyone else, I guess, is quite close to their counterpart. The only call that's lagging behind is the uh, tusk there on Rapido. Hey, He's miles behind, actually. 5,000 gold behind all the other cores. Definitely not having it's, a game you would like. It's not going to get better, unfortunately. Just, uh, I mean, he could still win the game, right? It's not like, but like, in terms of net worth, it's just the situation you're in. You you went for this utility tusk with the Blink and the Guardian Greaves. It's like he's, you, you can clear out the camps the fastest or stuff, stuff like that. It's just uh, he wants to save allies, and he's playing this... The tusk for that. It's, it's nice, it's working, but net worth wise, you suffer, you suffer a lot. Overwhelming blink, by the way, on the alchemist. So, shows up next to people doing massive amounts of damage and slowing them as well, making it easier to kill them. Yeah. Is there any other item that he's going to build now, or is it all about just, I don't know, making more ags for his teammates? Uh, you, want, you might want to get the shard just so you can remove uh, the stun from your allies. Oh, here we, we go. Got the connection to the Ember Spirit inside the stack. Storm cannot react whatsoever. Does he have a buyback? Meanwhile, both the supports there was getting trapped by Karma, but they were able to disengage. But you can't evade the glimpse. Drags Hong Hong back into his grave. And two people gone there for Reapers. No buyback available. So this probably will be the tier two in the mid lane falling down. Food, food is here. It's <laughs> like someone's it's like orders lunch. It's like, guys, the food's here. Uh, yeah, this, uh, that's two times that we see a stack storm lock down an enemy called first because RVP. This time it is fearless. And as you can see, Zerg, see how they're like, you know, we're just making a beeline for enemy buildings right now. 40 seconds without the Ember Spirit, that might be a tower for them. Though, although there are glyphs available if uh, Reapers will use it. So, may, you know, getting super creeps a bit tough, but maybe getting the tier 3 is possible. Yeah. Be able to at least take that down. I mean, Toy's gonna do his best, just constantly harass from afar. Still 20 seconds though without the Ember Spirit. Jarja gets the glimpse, well, not quite in the range of the actual pit of Manus. Never Karma, not caring about that. Jumping forwards anyway. There is gonna be the Glimmer Cape, which actually allows him to disengage, not have an interdetection that deep into the enemy base. And now it will be the uh, Q for Zerja to all just disengage. Get on out while you can. I mean, done half the, uh, half the HP pool there of the tier three. I think they forced out a couple of BKBs as well, so it's not too bad. Wait, wait they just done a. F I think they're going for a fake back right now. Seeing if I anyone on the side of Reaper steps out. Yeah, I think we're we're going back, but we're not. There's still 50 seconds towards Rosh, so Xerxia, they like they're they're. I would say they should be in any rush. You know, Roshan could be up in any second. You can take it for yourself if you want, but both teams scanning each other. The Regis scan finds the dire side. Dyer, they, they scan the tower, but they realize no one's going to be defending it. So it's going to be high ground defense for Reapers. Unless they smoke themselves. They are grouping up together here. They see, I think, I think they have an idea that JG's around the area. Yeah, I, I think the uh, there's there's an Observer Ward outside of the Radiant base on both angles. So yeah, I, I believe Zerja spotted them all out moving as a group. So yeah, as that cube, they've just got straight up to the high ground. Tier three's already gone. Good wave clear though. I mean, as you have the draw ranger. As long as you can you just keep spamming those multi shots up, you're gonna be. I don't say you're gonna be fine, but you're always gonna be in a situation where it's like we can at least defend, we can at least delay them, we can make it risky for them. Mid for Roche, draw ranger. She's got a crystal. She's just, she's just have that damage, man. It's not her fault. Like this here is usually built this way, but your ability to bring down the alchemist is so limited when. You do decent damage, but you have no backup. Like, what is the Beastmaster doing? What is the Ember Spirit? These guys aren't going to be able to bring down the Alchemist. At least they're not going to be able to hurt the Alchemist enough. Yeah, that's very true. Oh, Jaja. He might be able to get Grappy onto Fearless. Going to drop the ult, and he was not expecting that whatsoever. Out of the blue, down goes the Ember Spirit. And that's 80 seconds in the ground. Still no chance of a buyback. And obviously, Roshan up in 20. So that's going to be the cue for Zerja to probably take that objective down and then push for the potential end of the game.
And that's actually, that is going to be high ground now. They don't really want to care about going for the Roche. They want the buyback. They're like, listen, you, you, if you have to kill us, if you have buyback, you better use it. We're not going to, we're not going to give you a... Roshan, remember, Roshan is only the fast rush, but it could have been two minutes longer. They don't know this, so, like, might as well force out with can Oh, dear. Nice kick back there onto RDP, caught by the Abyssal Blade. Sure, he can be, can, be, can he at least get his ult off in time? He cannot. He gets it. Actually, I think he did, but it was on the uh, Lincoln Sphere, so he gets completely negated regardless. Tombstone gonna drop as well, trying to keep it alive for as long as possible, but this really feels like it's the end of the game here. Reaper chucking skills out left, right, and center to try and hold them back, but it's losing the entire set of barracks. Um, racks taken, mid racks. You still have 20 seconds to wait. You have to wait for Fearless to show up, and uh, Karma doesn't need that long to, to get that, that tower down. He's gonna go for racks as well. Ultimate is down, he's gonna be down. Oh, here, that's the kick. Another kick back there onto Gondry. Down goes the Undying. We'll have a buyback to use. Meanwhile, Toy though has been caught out. BKB still on cooldown. He cannot get out. Also, probably be forced to use his buyback. It's such an expensive little engagement here for Reapers. Very aggressive TP oh, in from wow. the Ember Spirit. Gets caught by the ult, but at least he's able to force stuff out. No ball to lock him in place. Rupido able to disengage for now. JG may be caught out. He's going to get caught from the first Ember Chains. Drop down the Fiend's Gate, but it's not enough time to actually use it. And Reapers, they're on the hunt. They want to try and take as many people down as they possibly can. Jar Jar running himself in to force staff his fellow support out of there. But it's still going to let Bombi die. So, I mean, sure, Reapers, they bounce back, but it was very expensive to do so. They, they instantly, though, say, hey, let's go straight for Roshan, you know? Uh, that's what they want. It's, uh, it's available for them if they can get it. So uh, that's. I mean, it's, it's going to be enough. They did lose the mid racks at least. So getting Roshan, the Aegis, and Zerski has lineup. The Disruptor, I like, guess, helps a lot, but they might be running out of steam fairly soon. Yeah, I, I think that was all purely because uh, when, when Disruptor put down his ultimate, I believe Kinetic Field was still on cooldown. Like, if he got that field off, Fearless would have died 100%, and I, I think that that fight would have been completely different. Luckily, he got four staffed out to safety, and uh, it's still 20,000. Gold lead for Xerxia. They still, and look at that. Karma, he just... He's just ratting. Why not? It's like, you guys, you've heard of sneaking in a Roche. We just sneak in a Rax. That's how we do it. Uh, that's objective, Dota right at its finest. Meanwhile, it looks like Reaper's going to be able to take down their first tier 2 of the game and have access to uh, capture the enemy outpost now. But, I mean, after they'd already claimed Roshan, not the biggest impact in the world. But hey, it's something. Toy. Very close now to the Silver Edge. Uh, just about 600 gold away. Obviously, his buyback is going to be on cooldown. So, doesn't really have to save any money up, can just spend it willy nilly. Refresh shard is, is on the Ember Spirit, so we might see him just, you know, throw out those, but he's got the Refresh shard and the cheese, so I expect the Magic Wand as well as the Ball will be replaced by those. RDP, I feel like he's got the Blink, he's had the Blink Dagger and the Helm of the Overworld for pretty much the entire game right now. He's gonna go for the Hex, which would be nice if he could get it, and in the meantime, no shard on the Alchemist. He has it queued up, definitely need it, you know, with a Remove those searing chains from your allies, and uh, so I'm, it's it's a basic dispel. So it doesn't remove stuns, but still very very useful. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite surprised he's not grabbed it, considering uh, the man's loaded. He's always loaded. He's got plenty of money to spare. But I don't know. I guess he just wants to put that 1400 towards something else. Uh, we do see Reaper managing to move out of their base right now. Gonna start trying to siege this tier two tower. Lepner off to the sides. This can't quite get the connection of the. Slight, uh, slight fist though. Still able to take down the tier 2 tower. Okay. Just lots of poking and prodding from afar. Neither team feels like they, they want to try and actually take the engagement. I mean, obviously, Zergia, uh, they've got to contend against the enemy Aegis, which is probably the reason why they didn't just barrel on in head first. But even still, Reaper realizing that they are behind this game, even with the Aegis in tow. And they're trying to be very, very clinical about how they actually decide to engage. Plus, for Xerxes, it's like, why would we take a fight right now? All we have to really do is just play the game, make sure the bottom, you know, like, bomb's pushing in, someone's going to have to go defend it. So that's all they really want to do right now. They don't want to take fights. They want to make sure they drag it out until they get something for themselves. And Pido, Bombi, they blink forward, can't find anyone. But it doesn't matter, you know, as long as they just keep playing top, 
And the other side lanes are going to solve themselves. Even with the enemy having an Aegis, which is going to time out in two minutes. Yeah, this was just playing the waiting game. Don't, I don't think uh, Reaper will have the opportunity to take any more objectives within that amount of time before the Aegis times out. And then that's going to be the real danger zone. Zerge will just go full pelt, run at them again. Try and close out Megas at the very least. But I was looking at... I was looking at Tusk and I was like, huh, I thought this guy was going to be a creep. Then I realized, oh yeah, he's got an aggro scepter from his friend. You know, I was like, why do I need to farm? I got this guy for me. I can make space for him. Toy? Uh, Toy. Gets a nice kick there on towards the Drow Ranger. That is the perfect target. Locked in place. Obviously does have the Aegis. Can they actually even keep it alive? Looks like they will. Keeping that Aegis intact for an extra minute and 20 seconds. It's very, very close there, Zerja. Being able to net in a free objective. And even as it stands... I might just carry on trying to push for something else. Lucky for them, they didn't lose the ages, but again, it's only one minute left. At that point, Xerxia can do whatever they want if they want to go for these um, objectives. I, I, by the way, I love the Ancient Granite Golem. I think this is the best open in the game. 15% you know, max health. What more could you ask for? Yeah, that is quite nice, actually. Especially against... Uh, well, isn't the Firestorm percentage-based? So it, it is. It's, it's sort of like... Yeah, I don't know, it's like a double-edged blade at that point. I mean, you do take more damage, but you also have more health to play with. It's, it's fine, it's good. It's, I said it's good, it's good. Fearless is going for it. He's just doing it. Running on in there with the BKB. Desperately wants to try and get on top of the sports to remove them. There's going to be the static storm, but Fearless still had the BKB. He used a refresher shard to get it back online. So Shazza's ult has been completely wasted. Reapers have got a fantastic opportunity now to take a fight and feel pretty damn uh, convincing about it. Yeah, so they, they they know without that stack storm they have to just run away. At the same time, you know, you have creeps in the top lane, you have creeps in the bottom lane, and all the creeps are close to your base. This is the, the disadvantage of having two super creeps. Like one super creep, okay. You know, you can at least push that one lane out, then you can group up but two, it's a it's a whole different story, and they are suffering from that for Reapers. This is only game one, by the way. Holy moly, this is only game one. I think this is the longest game we've had so far of the day. <laughs> And, I think uh, it might be, yeah. Reapers, they've kept it very competitive so far. Despite a massive disadvantage in gold, they still look very strong. Yeah, for sure. Well, I suppose that is the one thing about an alchemist. It always, on the net worth, makes it look worse than it actually is. Mm. I think probably in a normal game, it was it probably actually like a, what, a 15,000 gold lead, something like that. Like more like 10, right? Like, like, you're right, like you know, it's like... You know, like, like maybe you're right. Like he's like sizable but not insurmountable. Yeah. So more of the map this boss just hurting them. RDP, he's gonna get caught. Jump forwards, yeah. There is Beastmaster, four staff to safety though, trying to bring him out. Unfortunately, Gondry though completely separated. He will get punished for it. The tomb's so up on the high ground, no one can actually hit it right now, so there's gonna be a hell of a lot of zombies to work. Meanwhile, the stack storm actually did get a connection onto the drown ranger. Can they burst it down fast enough? It doesn't look like it. He's able to disengage. Applying a lot of damage on towards the Tusk, but just so many four staffs pushing themselves around. The to and fro. Fearless getting locked in place. The zombies doing a lot of work. JG actually had to stand back to get rid of them. Kick backwards there on towards the Ember Spirit. Fearless might finally end up dying, and he does. He's gone for 90 seconds. No buyback. Even Hong Hong. A third couch there for Reapers. So it's down to a two versus five. Can they actually try and hold off the Megas? JG gives them a portal. Go back, guys. Heal up and come back. And wait, I need you to win this game. And uh, refresh, is that a refresher orb on the Alchemist? I don't know. I think he, picked, I think he bought it, but I didn't see him pick it up. And JG, he's also got a Scythe of Ice. So there is a buyback. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another refresher stuff. He's got, there's got a buyback on the Undying, but I'm not really sure what that guy's going to do if he comes out. He's like, don't worry, guys. I'll decay them. You know, I was like, <laughs> I'll drain that. Poor strength. Yeah, I'll show them. Oh, we up. Central gap. Oh, the stack storm actually got a little bit off the mark there again this time round. RDP though gets kicked outside the base. Got his BKB off, but unfortunately doesn't help <coughs> doesn't help him survive against the physical attack there of the alchemist. And this is it. I mean they're not even choosing to get megas, they just want to end the game right now. First tier four is fallen, still 25 seconds without the Ember Spirit. They're gonna have to try really hard to keep this game going for him. Toy just getting jumped on four staffs yet again, trying to get himself into the base. Gondry's there just in range, keeping his Drow Ranger alive. Cannot say the same though for Hong Hong, leaping away, but not enough. He will still fall. And Toy, it's the relentless barrage of arrows there onto JG, but even still, he's able to disengage. Now the turnaround. 
But the BKB is there from Toy again to make sure he does not get caught by the Pit of Malice. But it just does not matter. They're losing so many people. The Ember Spirit's back. Five back as well from the Undying. So it's still a three versus five. The Megas are now secured. The Ancient is open. And it, it seems like Zerja, they're paying a bit of respect to this. They're not just relentlessly charging forwards. I mean, they, but they take a mega creeps and they can they can afford to take as much time as they want to right now. The Roshans are very fast if they want to go back for it, but in the end, I mean, it is mega creeps and Rapido forward it here. Gets, yeah, he gets the kick down to Gondry, but his team was just nowhere nearby. But speaking around nearby, they've got the grapple to feel this again. Ember's down, but he has buyback this time around. He is going to do it. Jump in. Can he help out Toy? He cannot. The Drow is dead. It's just him left all alone. There is a Beastmaster respawning momentarily. Max Dagon just bought out for the Alchemist. <laughs> Why the hell not? And then that is it. Zerja end up taking the first game with this best of two series. I mean, it's was a really impressive showing by Reapers. You know, like, you know, the team lost, but so what? They were up, they had a tough laning phase with, you know, RTP suffered in the top lane. Mid lane feelers had a very tough time against the uh, Underlord, who was just able to just take every, all the last hits. And even bomb lane didn't go as well as you'd like, but they managed to rally after that, despite an incredible net worth lead for Cersei for the entire game. Still, it's not enough. Karma, flawless game, 14 0 and 20. Um, JG as well, winning them the bomb lane, and, and Jaja got these massive stack storms. Often on just one, you know, one key, sorry, one key uh, core, getting them the kill. So it's uh, it's very impressive what they were able to do, and that's how they were able to take game one. Yeah, a very impressive showing it is. So well done to them taking that first game. That's the some points secured for them. Uh, Reapers, they did look horrendously bad in that series, but yeah, definitely got to make some changes. Uh, yeah, I mean, they did better than when they were up against Neon, right? So that that is something to say. Uh, one thing I will point out, right, is that how how long was that game? 47 minutes, and the Undying only had 6.3k net worth. That is proper POS5 life, that. You just, <laughs> it's absolutely hardly anything to work with. But hey, Slow. that's the life of it. If he had the Philosopher's Stone, he'd be like, I've been so rich, guys. All I know that Philosopher's Stone, but uh, you don't always get that one, unfortunately. Yeah, if only. Imagine if they had a 100% chance to spawn. I, I, I still bet that the cores would steal it away. Like, they're not going to let that go. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the first game of the series, guys. Game number two will be coming up in about 10 minutes' time. Let's see if Reapers are going to be able to bounce back and finally claim one game of this tournament so far. We shall see. So don't go. More Dota to come.